Hello everyone, um, today I have another XX737 preview video for you and please keep in mind that everything you see here is still a work in progress so some uh, things might not be the way they are in the final product. So with that in mind let's go ahead today I will uh, show you a video that um, shows how to power up the aircraft electrically and start the engines but uh, with a little twist on this video we pretend that the APU is not working. That happens from time to time. It's an entry in the TLB so um, you cannot use it. Okay here we are entering the cockpit and you can see pretty much everything is off. Some instruments are still on as I said. Preview beta work in progress. I tilt up towards the overhead panel, you see everything is dark, not even the ground power is connected yet, the blue light for the ground power is off, and um, I use the views menu that you can see on the left bottom to flip to certain views rather comfortably, and of course this menu is configurable, you can save the views and you can adjust that to your liking or not use it at all. Okay, first off I'm going to turn on the battery switch and you can see the lights are, some lights are coming on showing which systems are powered, which ones are not. You can see the generators are still off. And I use a script to connect the ground power, then now the blue ground power available light comes on. And um, I, before I grab that switch and connect the ground power to the generators I want to show you uh, reset the master caution here to show you that the EADI is still blank, it's not powered of course, and I connect the ground power, it's powering both generator buses now, and if I pan the view back down again, you can see it's still blank because it takes uh, 20 to 30 seconds to power up just like in the real aircraft. The EHSI is already powered, as I said, beta, and um, that is not hooked up correctly yet. I turn on the fuel pumps, and the low pressure lights go off and also the window heat that is supposed to be powered at least 10 minutes before departure so the windows get warm and flexible. Now look up at the IRS panel. I'm turning on both IRS systems. They run a little self-test on DC then go into the align mode. It would take about 12 to 13 minutes now to align that and you can see the 7 it can show 12, so it just shows 7 until the time runs down. Okay, now I enter the coordinates. First, the latitude, north, 50 degrees, 2.6 minutes, enter. And um, then on purpose I put on a wrong longitude, start with west. Realize that Frankfurt is not in the west, I hit clear, and I can start all over again. You can see that the digits move towards the left as you enter. And you have the little dots on the top and bottom to show you where the degrees and minutes are. So I flip that back to status and you see the time is running down. It's more than seven minutes. That's what it tells us right now. Okay, I pan down here and um, let's see what I do now. You can see that we still don't have any pneumatic pressure. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, as I said, the APU is off. So before I start the engines, I need to test the fire warning and um, as I move that test switch to the right the fire handles light up and you would hear the bell too and I test the extinguisher bottles both the squibs are being powered and the low pressure lights are working too. Now I go back up and I tell the guys on the ground to please connect the bleed air. I use a little script for that again in the final product we will have a more realistic way to do that of course and you can see the duct pressure rise I need 40 psi to start the engines plenty of pressure to start I grab the start switch put it to ground and you can see the N2 starts to move that's the inner shaft that starts turning real quick it's getting turned by the starter you see the start valve open light is on and eventually the big rotor, the N1, is going to come along and start turning too. Pan the view a bit so I can see the engine instruments at the same time as the engine start levers. I grab the second one, move it up, and you can see the engine lights up, EGT rises, and at 46% N2, the starter will cut off automatically. 
can see the start valve open light is off now and as I pan up to the overhead you can see the start switch flipped to off and um, now that the engine is running I can use it to power the right generator bus I flip it up and you can see the amps come on on the ampere indicator and um, what I do now is I disconnect the ground power and of course the left bus that was powered by the ground power is not powered anymore bus off light comes on and you can see some window lights also that uh, came on now because the left generator bus is not powered anymore reset the warning you can still see the ADI is powered now but no attitude information and um, I'm also disconnecting the bleed air. You can see the duct pressure drop, but not all the way down because now obviously the right engine is providing pressure right through the isolation valve also to the left engine. And we need that pressure now to start engine number one, the left side engine. So we would in real life do a pushback now. Once the pushback is complete, I'd set the parking brake and um, then you would advance the thrust lever actually only on the right engine but here I do both until you get enough pressure to start the left engine and you can see as I advance the thrust lever the engine revs up the duct pressure rises I need again at least 40 so from real life I know it's almost 40 percent and one that I need and um, I set that here on the model too there it goes and um, Take a peek up, yeah, that's more than 40 psi, that's plenty. I move the left start switch to ground. See the start valve open light open or come on, showing that the valve opens, the N2 is turning. And you can see the duct pressure drop now. The starter draws quite a lot of air and of course the right engine cannot keep the high pressure up now. But that's fine, you can see the N2 is coming up nicely. And as I move the view again, you can see my throttle is twitching a bit there I grab the start lever flip it up and the engine comes to life just as the right one did before at 46 percent start valve open light comes off I reduce the thrust levers back to idle again and both engines spool up to idle power now I can Power the left generator bus too. I flip that up. Light goes off, and also the all the window lights, window heat lights are off again as they're supposed to. And um, also the fuel pumps are all pressured again. I pan up now to look what the IRS is doing, and see five minutes to go. So in five minutes, I'd be ready to move the aircraft. Well, this concludes this little video, and. Um, I hope that you enjoy what you see so far. If you have any questions, fire away.